discuss what is the role, the current role of science and technology in the country right now, and then let's ask ourselves, what do we need to do? And what can be done at the moment? Okay. Now, maganda sa pakinggan sa Filipino to eh. Or, ang aghama teknolohiya sa Pilipinas ay bansot at agwasan. It's easier to understand um, rather than st saying it's stunted and underwater. It is stunted or bansot because it did not have the opportunity to grow. It did not grow as would we would want. Maraming mga kikalain, maraming matatalino, pero hindi natin nagagamit or hindi natin nagagawa yung pwede natin magawa kasi may mga ilang structural problems that are there. Now, underdeveloped means that we can still do a lot. This is not yet um, the peak of Philippine um, capabilities. We can do a lot with what we have. We can do a lot by improving what we have. And therefore, there's a lot of things that we can do with science and technology. The problem is we're not there yet. We're very far from that position. In fact, we ask uh, surveys uh, among ASEAN countries and our neighbors, we're actually going to be very high. Numerically, number 45 out of 46 for science, 43 out of 45 in math. And therefore, if you look at it, numerically high, but you're really at the end of the line. And they're not really prepared to do science and technology, and if they, after K-12, most of them would not get into the STEM track, most of them will not be scientists or engineers. So this is obvious in education. This is obvious in, um, as I've said earlier, your Filipino 13-year-old is ill-prepared in science and math. Um, only 60%, 65% of our high schools would have science um, equipment, and therefore 35% will just draw their experiments on the board and tell um, the students this is what will happen if we had the experiment. And that's not the way to do science. To do science in the, uh, effectively, you have to have hands-on um, experience. In other words, you cannot imagine electricity unless you see a light, uh, light bulb light. You cannot imagine the cell phone until you actually hold the cell phone and use it. You cannot just describe that. Uh, and this is, that is what really happens, not only in the basic science, but even in the applied science, in many areas, not only in the uh, high school, but also in the tertiary level. Now, in industrial growth, uh, it's much more evident. Um, the evidence that I will point to is the lack of jobs. Kaya walang trabaho ang ating mga manggagawa ay kasi wala namang pagawaan the lack of industries is one big reflection of the lack of uh, industrial capacity in the country. We don't have basic industries. We don't have any ways to make things that we would be using. Now, and of course, without industries, you don't have jobs. And without jobs, you don't have a future. Now, this is one of my favorite slides. Uh, it's a graph. It's a graph of the GDP, the gross domestic production of the country in terms of production, services, and public utilities. 100%, that's the whole economy, and that's from 1946 to 2008. There's a second part of the slide. Uh, the, the data is actually up to 2012. Now, the first thing that you would notice is that since after the war, okay, 1946, agriculture has been steadily going down. That's green. Now, agriculture is very important in the country. Uh, because it's, it's the way that we will feed our nation. Now, the fact is, 70% of our people is engaged in agriculture. 7 out of 10 is engaged in agriculture. And if you look at it, in 1946, 41% of our economy is agriculture. Right now, 41 per, uh, that 41% has gone down to less than uh, 10%. And the problem there is, of course, is that it's not that we cannot just feed ourselves. That's the, one of the most evident problems for students like you. Uh, the problem would be that the 70% that is engaged in agriculture is now just sharing a very, very small part. That's not even the problem, the bigger problem. 
The bigger problem is in production, in ma the manufacturing part. The manufacturing part, that's the gray dashed line. So manufacturing plus agriculture is equal to the blue line, which is production. So the manu manufacturing part, the, the dashed gray line, is actually the ones that make the things that we use. Your computer, your chair, your clothes, your food, etc. the things that you use. And if you would see, after the war, we don't really have production. That's obvious because all industrial production has been destroyed during the war. But it has steadily increased, but just plateaued or stayed there at around 23% on the average since 1950s. So a productive capacity of the Philippines has stayed relatively flat since the 1950s. In terms of percentage, we were just producing whatever we, can, we have produced in the 1950s as a percentage of our economy. Lumalaki ang ekonomiya natin, ganun pa rin ang kakayahan natin. Uh, lumalaki siya numerically, you know, in terms of number. But in terms of part of our economy, we haven't really been producing that much. We're just producing roughly one-fourth of our economy is in production. Ano ang problema kapag hindi tayo nagpo-produce ng mga bagay? Pag may kailangan ka, saan kayo mo po? The problem of the lack of things that you would be needing in everyday life will be the problem. So, you'll go to a mall, all the things there are important. Not because by choice, of course there are very posh malls there, but because there's nothing being produced here, everything will be imported over there. You go to a sari-sari store, not necessarily your trendiest place to buy things, but you will not find anything that is produced here except for a very few items. So even our condiments, even our, I mean, this is the usual joke, even our toothpick is made outside. That's true. Not just the toothpick, most of the things that you would use. Now, if there is ever any production here, it's mostly very small, okay, not a very large-scale production, or if it's being produced here, then it has a very large import component. What do you think is the biggest export of the country? It's something that you cannot eat. It's something that you actually use every day. It's hard disk, it's electronics. You, you would wonder, electronics? So that means if I go in recto, okay, no, recto, uh, then I can buy electronics at a very, very um, reduced price. Because it's, a, it's a, your top export, and therefore there must be, we must be awash with electronics. But we're not. Okay? That largest export has a very large import component. In, in other words, to produce the electronics that we export, we import everything else. What do we do? What do we add? All the things that we add is just labor. Now the problem, of course, is the labor costs here in the Philippines are very low. Pasweldo, etc. And therefore, you don't really do any science and technology anymore. You just assemble things, you export them. That's it. And that has gone even after the government has tried to uh, recalculate changing uh, baselines, the trend of going uh, production going down, manufacturing going flat, agriculture falling, is actually the same. So we're, uh, what has taken up our economy? I mean, bakit pa tayo hindi pa tayo? That means something is actually uh, giving jobs, however small, to our economy. Now that's the services. Services like call centers, back-end offices, the service crews that you actually encounter in fast food, the rentals that you have, etc. These are services. Now, what is the very distinct um, nature of services? The, the problem with services is that you don't really get to hold anything from services. You call a call center, you don't bring home anything. Yeah? You get a service. Um, you rent a house, okay? The rental itself is a service, okay? So the services, services do not really produce material objects. The problem, of course, as I said earlier, if you need something, it will not come from services. 
diba? So that's the whole problem of our economy right now. Um, we don't produce a lot. We don't, we're not an industrial economy. We're pre-industrial. We're still agrarian but backward at that. Backward in the sense that even up until now, 2018, we still have people in doing agriculture by literally pushing their um, their their animals and literally doing artisanal work by hand. Nag-aararo sila ng kamay. Kung wala sila um, kalabaw, they do it themselves. And that's a very low productivity way of doing agriculture. Now, even if you give them tractors, they don't really own the land, so nothing comes to them. So what do we do? What do Filipinos do? If there is no jobs here, what do most of your um, for, uh, titos, titas, nanay, tatay do? They go out. They go abroad. Most of our, well, 10%, now around 11%, 10 to 11% of our Filipino labor force is actually outside of the country. And that's one way of finding jobs. But do you know how much the jobs in Saudi right now is? It's actually the same as the entry-level construction worker here in the country. Wala nang diferencia. That just means that people, Filipinos, would take any job opportunity, even if it's outside of the country, even if they don't have to come home. Okay? Uh, and this um, headline is not surprising anymore. Right? Um, that, was, that was last year. You can actually find um, that this trend has been going up, the joblessness. Uh, in fact, it was surprising that even our uh, Philippine Statistics Authority does not report joblessness anymore. They report um, the percentage of those who have jobs. It's a negative element of joblessness. But this is actually increasing um, uh, since the last few years. Now, most of you would be 18 to 24, right? Or wish to be 18 to 24. Where do I divide? So half of you, it can be my left or my right, will not have jobs if you try to find jobs right now. In fact, more than half, 52% of your age range cannot find jobs. It doesn't matter if you're from FEU, from USD, from UP, or any of those top universities. Because on the average, baka na hindi pa kayo yung kunin, that uh, you your age group will have difficulties in finding jobs. And that's the promise of um, um, the job market. Uh, you can find jobs if you have good education, but in this economy, a good education is not a uh, very big assurance that you will find jobs. Why? It's not because you don't have credentials. It's because the economy cannot absorb the labor force that we're producing right now. It's even the researchers in the um, in, in the government and uh, she's now a uh, undersecretary of Elita Eldaba in the um, DTI and she, was been, she has been saying that we need to have manufacturing. That they did try to have a manufacturing resurgence but this is still is the main characterization of our economy. We don't produce things. If ever we have production, we have extraction on one end. So we do have mining. We do have uh, sales at the other end, right? But we don't have production in the middle. So what do we do? If you need metal, if you need um, iron, what do you do? We do have iron ore. We need iron in buildings, but we don't actually produce iron bars. So what we do is to export the iron ore and then buy it back. Mas mura, mas mahal. Mas mahal, obviously. Okay, because the value that the, the cost there is because it, it tries to reflect the value added. The value added is in transforming that ore to, uh, to steel. We don't have those value-adding industries here. Now, value adding is part of 
science and technology and engineering. If you have new processes to make better steel, then you can sell your steel at a higher price. But do you really need metallurgical engineers? Do you really need any chemistry? Because you don't really have that production. You don't have that need. Maybe you would need structural engineers because you're building things, but at the cost, maybe you just need one. You don't need thousands, right? You might need mining engineers, but probably not those experienced because all you need to find is the rock. And that's the problem. So you cannot really develop your science and technology because we don't have those industries in India. So what do we do? We have low value added manufacturing. I know low value added manufacturing. Yesterday I was in an electronics company. Um, they import, as I said earlier, a lot of their electronics. Resistors, capacitors, all the parts that they have. All they do is to really put them together. Okay, they put them together and then make a radio for your car, make a, uh, make a device for your um, for your computer, etc. We do manufacture hard disks in the Philippines, so even the hard disk in the computer is sometimes made in the Philippines. But all they do is to actually assemble the Philippines. Okay? And um, most of our production is in that state. So do you really need PhDs in chemistry, etc.? How many of those that you would need? And therefore, it's not surprising to find scientists to go out. Okay? It's not just ordinary professionals. It's even our highly trained scientists and engineers going out of the country, nurses as well, okay? medical professionals, etc., who actually go and seek employment elsewhere. Reason? We don't really have places for them in our economy. They can participate in the economy, but sometimes not as scientists or engineers. And if you actually look around and find where are our ex experts, there are, you will find, in general, we're ranked, again, very high, 96 out of 139. Well, numerically, I'm sorry. Uh, at least, we uh, don't Numerically high, but we're at the tail end as well. And what this means is that if you're looking for an expert, you, more often than not, we cannot find the experts. Around. Okay, there's a roughly around 100, P, uh, 100 PhDs in physics in the country. Okay, And this is a roughly 100 million people. That makes me a one in a million guy, right? Cool. After five seconds, I'm lonely again. I'm, in fact, the weight will actually press on my shoulders because there's one million people in the Philippines that are actually depending on me to decide or to give anything information, model anything in physics. Sagot ko ang isang million. That's not a nice thing to think about. And it's even worse for a lot of other scientific professions. If we're actually going to to add together all the scientists and engineers. Do you know how many are there? That includes all the experts here in FEU. Would you guess? Would anybody guess? There's only 10,000, in fact, 9,870 research scientists and engineers. In other words, those who are really engaged in research. You only have 10,000 in the whole country of a 10 million. Kaya hindi kayo magtataka kapag merong disaster, pare-parehong tao ang nakikita mo. Iisa lang ang nakikita mo. Siya na lang kasi yun. Kaya pag nakita nyo, yakapin nyo na yun. Kasi baka mawala na. Baka tangayin ng bagyo. Sorry. Um, we really have a dearth of experts. Uh, I know some of the people here in your university research fellows, uh, sila na lang din yun. Uh, you don't really have a lot of people. And therefore, it's very important that scientists or science um, students okay, would actually try to develop and become more experts and stay here in the country. So, sci, that includes everything. Sci, chemistry, physics, 
basic sciences, economics, etc. Because if you stay here, then you add more number to whatever the people would need the experts. Right? Uh, ang hirap naman kasi kung kailanganin ng Pilipino, wala tayong may bigyan. The reason here is partly because you don't really have a lot of um, funding. But even if you double the funding, even if you triple the funding, which the government plans to do, okay, you don't really have people to absorb it. I mean, bigyan mo ang sampung libo na researchers, if you don't have students to work with you, you cannot do any, everything. Okay? The way to do it is that you should actually generate and let them, let the experts stay here. Uh, the problem is they don't have places to go. And we only have a, like, around 1 per 12,000 uh, researcher um, density in the country. That's very far from Singapore. It's one out of 164. Okay? But you know, Singapore is smaller than Manila. So. Uh, but Thailand is a nice uh, number to look at. Thailand has one fourth of what we have. Indonesia, which is a very large population, has one half of what we have. And Vietnam as well. The situation right now where we're in is that we don't have the industries. We don't have any program for developing our um, the rural in, uh, area to industrialize the area. Agricultural modernization is not even um, a big uh, I idea that is working in the agricultural department. Earlier, they were talking about the sugar shortage, okay, and the solution was to import, not to develop our sugar production but to import, okay? Always to import. Now, the reason was given um, is that the, they have to fill the need immediately, but that was the same thing that they were saying a few years ago. So, lagi na lang crisis at crisis yung kinaharap na. And that's the same thing for a lot of areas. The research and development is not really integrated in the thinking of our policymakers and even of industry. If you look at, if you ask industry, do you have any thing to make? Uh, do you have any research and development in your country, uh, in your company? They would say, no, we have very little. Okay? In fact, the Fili Federation of Filipino Industries says that they actually have little or none research and development in the country. But those problems of sewage, transportation, etc., can be actually solved okay, by research and technology, but not just research and technology, but by better policy.